Welcome to the Writer's Way podcast, where we celebrate writers who have completed their books and inspire writers who haven't. Join Lori and her guests as they talk about writing, books, and life in between chapters. Hello again, writers. Today on the podcast, I'm talking to Bella Chander, B.J. Akumar. He's a children's author with two books out, and I asked him to share with all of you about his experience with a new release deal from BookBub. First off, did you even know these were a thing? Sadly, it didn't work out as well as he'd hoped, but I'll let him tell you why. I'd love to hear your experiences with BookBub in the comments after you've listened. Enjoy. Hello, writers. Welcome back to the Writer's Way podcast. I'm Lori here with Bella Chander, BJ Akumar, the author of Toddlers with Trunk series. Welcome, Bella Chander. Thanks for doing this with me. Thank you, Lori. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you for this invite. <laughs> okay, so before we start talking about your book bub experience, can sure. you just give us a bit of your history and how you started writing books for kids? Sure, I can. My name is Bala Chander. Uh, you can call me Bala Lori, but I grew up in India. So I was born there. I grew up in India. I spent most of my life there. And then work took me to the US where I lived for a couple of years. And then I went back to India. And then I moved to the UK in 2013. So I've been here for a, a six years or more. Yeah. So that's a bit about me personally. I work as a data consultant. That's what I do full time. And I started off with books as a hobby. So I have a, a bit of an interesting story there. So my son, who was now four, he was three uh, when we started writing books, he had an enormous appetite for reading books and he loved to hear a new story every day. And we couldn't really catch up with the number of books that he wanted. So I had to come up with new stories to put him to bed every day. And then most of my stories then did the job perfectly well. They just put him to sleep immediately, probably because they were boring. But there was one particular story that he loved so much. He asked for it to be repeated the next day, the next day after that. And then it, it went on for a few days after which one day after putting him to bed, I was sitting on the sofa and talking to my wife. And I told her, hey, why not make a book out of this? Because he really likes it. And probably we should share this with a lot of other kids around the world. And then my wife was silent for a few minutes. She thought it was one of my crazy ideas again. But then she said, hey, why not? Let's let's try that. I'll illustrate books for you. And she's not illustrating illustrator again she comes from a design background also she's practiced architecture uh -huh. she designs mobile apps computer applications and she's also practiced interior design so she comes from a rich background of design and she was happy to try this and then we started working on this and at that point in time we were not even aware of what self-publishing was what the traditional route was and only after we actually decided to do this more as a hobby as a exciting project we actually went about it and in two months from that conversation from merely being an idea we had a live book out there on amazon available for kids to buy and yeah so it, it was a really exciting project in that from 60 days we went from just an idea to a live book and so much we learned along the way and then we had a book out there wow. for everybody to enjoy yeah that's a great story. How did you decide to self, like, what was the tipping point that made you say, oh, we're just going to do it ourselves versus yeah, trying to get it? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I think at that point in time, because firstly, it, it was more of an exciting project that we wanted to work on. So, and also mainly the skills were actually in-house. So I had the story in mind. So I wrote that. I obviously got it edited by a professional, but then beyond that, my wife did the illustrations and then she also did the book formatting and she's used similar tools in her previous work, like Photoshop and so on. So the cost of producing a book was like significantly lower compared to probably in most other authors. So because it was all in-house we had very little to actually spend on creating the book and so the financial input that was required was not a roadblock in publishing one and also we were so excited at that time that we thought instead of just knocking on the doors of literary agents publishers we'd rather do it ourselves and then both of us had something to contribute so it was exciting and which is why we thought let's just self-publish and yeah that was the main driver actually do you guys still like each other <laughs> no, no we do no, it's, it's 
it's actually very interesting to just work on this project. It's a side project, obviously. So we both have day jobs to do, but probably it reduces yeah. how much time we spend on Netflix. So it's more working collaboratively with each other. And then my son is also very good at like user testing. He says, hey, why don't you add specs to this character? And we've actually seen in real reviews as well on Amazon that somebody's told the specs on that elephant was really cute. And so he, so it's like a combined family project and it keeps us going. So it's, we're happy to do that together. Oh, I love that. So much better than just watching Netflix together. <laughs> cool. And you, do you want to talk a bit about your new book series just so people yeah, definitely. know that you're still at it? Yeah. So we published two books in the Toddlers with Trunk series. So one was The Elephants and the Chocolate Cake. And then we did The Elephants and the Leaking Tap. So right now we're working on the third book, which is a, a part of a new series called Trevor Travels. So it's about Caterpillar, who's actually hungry for travel. So he wants to see the world he wants to go around the world and then in the first book it's about him actually taking the effort moving out of his comfort zone and then going to london and watching all the glorious sights of london and then we eventually want to follow it up with trevor travels to new york maybe chicago paris and so on but we're very close to actually publishing it but this time i won't take some time to actually market it really well to give it the best launch pad possible so i want to take a step back and obviously with me having published two more books, I'm not really in a rush to get it out of the way I wanted to give it the best platform possible. So I'll probably take some time, although the book is ready to market it, reach out to influencers and give it the best launch possible. Mm, I think that's smart. Sometimes we get so excited, we yeah. just rush in. I definitely, I do, I still do that with all my books. But so, did you? So you had a book club experience. Exactly. So were you trying to get the book club to market one of your first books? Yeah, it was the second book, The Elephants and the Leaking yeah. Tap. So this was back in July last year. Okay. So share with us all about your book club sure. experience. Yeah, happy to do that. So before I dive into what my experience was, I just want to take a minute to talk about the main offerings that BookBub has. So one is a featured deal and one is a featured new release. Okay. And then once I explain the differences, I can then dive into more about my experience. So firstly, BookBub has two different offerings. So one is the featured deal, which is what most of us know as the BookBub deal, right? So it is essentially BookBub sending out an email every day to its huge reader base talking about highly curated list of either free books or heavily discounted books. So usually you see that books are either free or 99 cents or 199 and the lower the cost of the book, the higher the number of sales. That's how it works. That's, I mean, commonly understood wisdom. I don't have real statistics there. So that's the feature deal. And what they have also introduced in the recent past, it's a relatively new offering is something called as the featured new release. So just going back to the feature deal again, sorry, to be eligible for the feature deal, your book should have good track record of sales, maybe some good number of reviews as well, and, and so on. But with featured new release is obviously BookBub understands that it's a new book. I think you should be eligible for the book only if your book has been live for less than 30 days or so on. So obviously BookBub understands that you can't really show like a track record of sales or a significant number of reviews, which is why there is still some level of curation there. They probably look at your cover or your blurb and so on. And then they can send out your book, book details on the weekly email. So it's an email that goes out every week. I get one every Tuesday. So that's the fundamental difference. Difference. There's one more significant difference, which is that unlike the feature deal where you have very heavy discount, books sent via the, the feature new release alert do not have to be discounted or even free. They're usually set at the same price. So if you're selling for $499, it's just the same price. So there is no discount on the feature new release. So these are the significant differences. Have I made myself clear, Laurie? Yes, that makes sense. If you wanted to discount the new release, could you? Yeah, or? yeah, I'm happy to uh, go there. I just wanted to set like the basic okay. understanding and then talk yeah. about why I talk about my own experience there. Yeah, yeah that All makes right. sense. Okay, so go ahead. So I then went ahead with the featured new release back in July 2019. So, and I think at that time, there were probably very few children's book authors. And again, this was a new offering who had actually gone for that. So I asked around on Facebook groups and the most common piece of advice that I got was set your book for free on Amazon, because what that then does is there are more number of downloads likely, and then your book reaches out to a huge reader base. And then also you're probably going to see more reviews coming out of it. So I went 
went by that logic and then I set my book to free. But then like it's happened with other bookbub like promotions like free booksy or even fussy librarian. As soon as the email goes out, I keep refreshing my Amazon reports to see how many people are downloading it for free. And it's so exciting on that day. So with bookbub, I was expecting it to happen on a much larger scale because their database is like significantly higher than any of their competitors. So I kept clicking and clicking after the email went out and I was just seeing something like 10 downloads. 20 downloads, 30 downloads, and e even many hours later, it was still in the double digits. And it really took me by surprise. And then I think much later into the night, I think with almost the most part of the day gone, I was still at about 70 downloads. And then I started thinking about it. And what I saw was that on the featured new release email that goes out, there is no price mentioned there. There's it, you don't see if it's free, you don't see if there is if it's heavily discounted. And again, that is because most books are not discounted there and it is just a promotion talking about new books, which I understand from BookBub's perspective. But my analysis of this is that BookBub readers are used to seeing books for free or at 99 cents. And the cheaper it is, the more downloads you get, obviously. But then with the new release, what's actually happened is that there is no mention of the price. You don't see if it's heavily discounted. And readers are probably just used to actually seeing books sold at the same price. So the incentive that they have been used to, which is getting books for much cheaper is just not there with future new deals. So I had an email conversation with BookBub. This is my analysis. This is what I think has happened. Could you share some numbers of the click-through rates of books that have like 99 cents or that are available for 199 or free? And I was telling them, I'm sure even without you sharing numbers with me that the cheaper the book, the higher the number of downloads. And what's happened with my book is that although I'm paying the same price as a normal feature deal, because users don't want to probably spend at the same price, they are probably not going to do that. So I asked them for click-through rates of different price bands, and I also wanted to understand my own click-through rate. So if I'm not wrong, I think at that point in time, BookBub user base was, I think, about 600,000 children's book readers, and I had about 70 or so downloads. So that was really, like, really bad. And then I asked them for my click-through rate as well. So they said they can't share details of the click-through rates of different tiers, price tiers, but they can tell me what my click-through rate was. And and so of that 600,000 or to how many ever it was downloaded, delivered the email, there were only 144 clicks. And one could argue that, well, you probably your cover was not great or your blurb was not great. But then again, it goes through one level of curation there. So to see just 144 clicks from emails and then 70 downloads, which I think is still fair between how many downloaded to how many went there, because there could be somebody who has a seven year old child for whom the book is not applicable. So that sounds OK. But just the fact that I pay for the same price, which is $130, but then I get only 70 free downloads. It doesn't look like a good deal. And it's just not what I expected out of BookBub. So I know the feature deal is fantastic. It, everybody knows about it. It's a great service and it puts your book out in front of so many people. But then, yeah, this was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense that if they don't know what the price is, they assume that it's full price. And yeah. So they just don't bother, exactly. which is really unfortunate. So I can yeah. picture you refresh, refresh, refresh. It's the same. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it was a bit disappointing and there was so much I could have done with that $130. I could have got Amazon ads running, got a lot of books sold. I could have generated half a million impressions on Amazon. I could have done right. a lot of other promotions for my book. So yeah, it's a lesson learned. I would still probably try for the feature deal, but I mm -hmm. would never want to invest back in a featured new release deal. And so when you were, you know, talking to them afterwards to try to analyze what happened, did they, because you said this was fairly new, this program, Yeah. did they say anything? like sorry or, or that's just how it is that's how it's going to be like have they changed anything since July so firstly I had asked for a refund because yeah. the numbers spoke out so loudly but they said that the only occasion where they would ever issue a refund if there was a technical issue so let's say if there are no mails going on they can give you a refund but then if your mail has gone out to their reader base they would not give you a refund regardless of how bad it was so firstly right. no refunds they did say they want to take my feedback seriously they did acknowledge that it's a new product, so it's probably not perfect. And they did share the click-through rates as well, so they could see that. So yeah, so it was again them trying to understand what went wrong, what my priorities were. They had told me that sales 
Science is not the only thing authors look for. So we want to understand what you're looking for. But then I explained to them that ultimately every author wants to make sales. It could be firstly getting reviews, which will lead to sales. It could be getting downloads of visibility, which is leading to sales. But ultimately mm -hmm. sales is something that everybody wants to get. So, mm -hmm. and I think that each of these parameters with each of them it didn't work for me i didn't get any of that so they take it into consideration i could see that they were probably discussing it with their own team they mentioned they would talk to their team and then come back but their yeah. policy doesn't allow for a refund and i think this was a learning experience both for me as well as for them mm -hmm. did you get any reviews did you notice from those 70 downloads <laughs> no. or page rates like <laughs> no not really any positive no no i think so it's hard to think of, of any positive that came out of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm yeah. sorry that happened, but I'm really appreciative that you come and share that with everybody so that, you know, it might look like a great deal or, or you know, exactly. people listening. So no, I'm more twice. than happy to do that. So I've always wanted to, so as you can see, it takes a bit of explanation. It's not hard to convey all the perspectives that I had on this. So yes. I've always delayed writing that long post in Facebook and it's just by chance that you were looking for somebody to talk yeah. about BookWeb and I thought it's a great platform to talk about it. Yeah, it worked out really well. Thank you. And I think you're always up against the different levels of experience when you do a big Facebook post like that to do. So you get a lot of, what's BookBub? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate you explaining it in the beginning so that people have a good understanding. Yeah. And I'm going to do a bit of a summary as well, just sure. for people who want to read and look at stuff so thank you so much where can people find you if they want to look up your books okay so i've not been very active on social media i know i've attended your course as well and that's something i did want to take out of it but yeah hopefully with the new book and me trying to focus on marketing i'll be a bit more active but on instagram they can find me on write illustrate that's repeat fun. <laughs> I'll have to find you too. And then your books yeah. are the Toddlers with Trunks series. So yes. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you again. I hope everybody goes and checks out your books now. <laughs> Get some downloads <laughs> maybe instead of the book. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> best of luck with your new series. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks oh, for you're welcome. Story. Thank you. Bye, Bella. Bye-bye. Yeah. You've been listening to the Writer's Way podcast. For show notes, links to guests' information, and to learn more about the Writer's Way, check out loririder.com. Until next week, enjoy this chapter of your life.